Welcome to the session on Informatics. Informatics is a common paper for BA English Literature of S4 and S3 BA English and Communicative English students in the University of Kerala. I'll be dealing with the module 4 and a little portion of module 1 in this paper and this particular portion the history and evolution of internet is from the last portion of module 1. So now we'll move on to the history and evolution of internet. Of course you know what internet is. Internet is a global wide area network that connects computer systems across the world. Internet is defined as an information superhighway to access the information over the web. It includes several high bandwidth data lines that comprise the internet backbone. These lines are con connected to major internet hubs that distribute data to other locations such as web servers and ISPs. ISP means Internet Service Protocol Providers. In order to connect to the internet, you must have access to an in internet service provider or ISP which acts the, as a like uh, bridge between you and the internet. The internet sometimes simply called as the net. It is a worldwide system of computer networks, a network of networks in which users at any one computer can, um, if they have permission, get information from any other computer, whether it is in a LAN network or a wide network. Most in internet service providers offer broadband internet access via a cable, DSL or fiber connection. When you connect to the internet using a public Wi-Fi signal, the Wi-Fi router is still connected to an ISP that provides internet access. Uh, that's why we have so many uh, internet service providers um, in our area, like um, in, in our country. Even cellular data towers must connect to an internet service provider to provide connected devices with access to the internet. Then, internet uses standard internet protocol which is also known as TCP or IP. Every computer in internet is a unique set of numbers which identifies a computer location. Every computer in an internet is identified by a unique IP address. A special computer DNS that is domain server domain name server is used to give name to the IP address so that user can locate a computer by a name. And of course you know that internet is accessible to every user all over the world and each and every IP address is different. Major internet services are, as you all know, social networking, education and technology, entertainment, online services like e-governance, e-commerce, etc. Now we look into the services in detail. The more internet, uh, there are more internet services that are listed below. You can just have a look at it. You know all these things, but just a, a simple reminder. One is one and foremost important thing is web. A collection of web means a collection of web pages that you can access with the help of a web browser like Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox or uh, old Internet Explorer or anything. Then any kind of information over the Internet can be accessed through these web pages for any, for example, information regarding uh, various topics like uh, what health. Uh, social studies, the geography, technology, information technology, then um, any kind of products, anything under the sun, you can find information from, with the help of a web browser. Then, next internet service, uh, the most important internet service you all are familiar with is email. It's the most common method of sending and receiving messages online. Of course, you they, in this day-to-day -day life, we use a multiple number of times. Uh, the emails. Now comes the social media. Of course, you are familiar with uh, this uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, MySpace, Twitter, etc. Many kind of number of uh, social media you are familiar with. These are websites that allow people to share their opinion, then photos, videos, etc. And you can comment upon the major um, issues, day-to-day -day life issues or films or anything, anything under the sun. 
then then comes online gaming or uh, there are both online and offline gaming of course uh, these all are provided by internet there there are games that allow people to play by themselves or in groups over the internet then there are of course you can access the television programs via online then songs videos etc with the help of um, the youtube channels or any other uh, like you know, service providers like netflix or hotstar or amazon prime or anything like that then you will be getting software updates from the uh, this from internet you can update your softwares whether it is your pc or your android phones or anything any your operating system and application updates are available by internet and you can download it and update update it by yourself and also there are so many e governance and e commerce services like uh, this internet banking online shopping we all are we all will be doing this online shopping uh, you know quite a lot of online shopping websites these days then online ticket booking online bill payment everything everything that is being done online in the early days of internet most people connected to the internet using a home computer and a dial up modem of course you might be familiar with this with this broadband uh, service providers they uh, um, who come to our home with this dial up modem dsl and cable modems eventually provided users with always on connections now mobile devices such as tablets or your smartphones make it possible for people to be connected to the internet at all times the internet of things has turned common appliances and home home systems into smart devices that can be monitored and controlled over the internet as the internet continues to grow and evolve you can expect it to become an even more integral part of your day to day life you all can never imagine your life without a smartphone or a mobile a smartphone or a tablet these days now let us move on to the evolution of internet you that is a big journey of course it will be tiresome and boring for you to listen i know but still no way just pay attention and try to see the points the idea of internet was conceived by the advanced research projects agency uh, or arpa of the us government in 1969 and was first known as arpanet so that was the first internet um, Uh, the first um, um, they origin brought in the first type of internet the original aim was to create a network that would allow users of a research computer at one university to communicate with research computers at other universities on october 29 1969 computers at stanford and university of california connected for the first time in effect there were the fir- they were the first host on what would one day become the internet so this was the first connection happened uh, between two computers at stanford university and the university of california an advantage of arpanet's design was that because messages could be routed or rerouted in more than one direction the network could continue to function even if parts of it were destroyed in the event of a military attack or other disaster so this was one of the most important advantage of the uh, of arpanet here you can see the kind of coding they used in this connection uh just an image that i got from wikipedia thus arpanet the first version of internet came into being it run on packet switching technology and uh, this is the first uh, this is the uh, like uh, photo of the arpanet the first real network i would say and the first message sent across the network was supposed to be login but reportedly the link between the two colleges that is uh, two universities stanford and university of california crashed on the letter g it is being believed like that we don't know anyway the first message sent across the network was supposed to be this uh, login the word login so the here is the picture of this uh, what you might find the more pictures in in, in internet the uh arpan uh, of arpanet the device that was using arpanet now comes uh, the development of unix that operating system language in 
um, not language, it is an operating system and that too happened in 1969. It is a multi-user uh, computer operating system. It is considered as a major milestone that happened in the um, 1960s. It was developed by Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie um, in the Bell uh, Laboratory. It's widely used for internet servers, workstations and mainframe computers. It's multitasking and multi-user capabilities and it's extensive um, library uh, use as a library software. Um, this And it's extensive library of software make it as relevant and useful today as it was in 1969. So, uh, the main features of uh, Unix, as uh, I mentioned, it is the portability. That, in, that is the ability to run on many different systems. It is a multi-user computer operating system. So this multitasking makes it um, different. That's why it's considered as a major milestone during the 60s. That is why it is considered as an extensive library of software because of its multiple use. And you can see a picture of uh, this, uh, its founders, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie working at Bell Laboratory with this uh, thing. This thing means Unix. And the pictures that shown on the right end are that programming, um, this, um, the, the kind of coding they use. Now, another milestone happened in 1971. That was the invention of email by Ray Tomlinson okay so the invention of email of course it was a wonderful thing happened and uh, yeah he initiated the use of at the right sign to separate the names of the user and the user's machine then it he initially addresses where of the form user name at host name but were extended to username at uh, host dot domain with the development of the domain name system. Domain name system was introduced later but still. Uh, the innovative email software he created was called uh, Send Message, S-N-D-M-S-G in caps. So Ray Tomlinson uh, was the person who invented email. So another milestone at the same year is the um, what implementation of Project Gutenberg. That is actually uh, the idea of collecting ebooks books that are being digitized so this uh, this project gutenberg was launched by michael s hart it's a volunteer effort to digitize and archive cultural works to encourage the creation and distribution of ebooks so, it, so it's considered as the oldest digital uh, library it began when michael hart gained access to a large block of computing time and came to the realization that the future of computers wasn't in computing itself but in the storage, retrieval and searching of information that at the time was only contained in libraries. He manually typed the Declaration of Independence and launched a Project Gutenberg to make information contained in books widely available in electronic form. In effect, this was the, uh, um, uh, the e-book was born. That's what we can say about it. And uh, next, in uh, 1972, the Network Information Center, or NIC, which was primarily responsible for domain name system, that is DNS. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this domain name system happened a bit later. So, yeah, domain name system, name and locations and directly directory services were established. It was run by the Stanford Research Institute, now known as SRI International. The Internic also co coordinated the IP address space, including performing IP address management for North America prior to the formation of ARIN, another agency which was uh, taking charge of this. So this Internic is a registered service uh, mark of the U.S. Department of Commerce. And in 1972 itself, another important thing happened was uh, um, the invention of Cyclades. Cyclades is uh, similar to ARPANET, but it is a project launched by France. It is a packet switching network where the host computer should be responsible for the reliable delivery of data. It 
സപ്പോർട്ടഡ് ജനറൽ ലോക്കൽ നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് റിസർച്ച് അർബ നെറ്റ് വാസ് ഓൾസോ ഡൂയിങ് ദ സെയിം ഐ ഹോപ്പ് യു റിമെമ്പർ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ബേസിക്കലി ഫോമുലേറ്റഡ് ഫോർ ദി കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദി യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ഹു വെയർ ഇൻ ദ സെയിം ഹു വെയർ ഡൂയിങ് ദ സെയിം ആസ്പെക്ട്സ് ഓഫ് റിസർച്ച് സോ ദിസ് ഓൾസോ പ്രൈമറി മോട്ടിവ് വാസ് ടു സപ്പോർട്ട് ജനറൽ ലോക്കൽ നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് റിസർച്ച് ദിസ് സിംപ്ലിഫൈഡ് നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് ഡിസൈൻ റിഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് ലേറ്റൻസി and reduce the opportunities for single point failures the expenditure with these concepts led to the design of key features of the internet protocol in arpanet project so that's all about the cyclade project uh, which was led by france in 1972 then arpanet made its first trans atlantic connection in 1973 Uh, with the University College of London. So it was a connection when that happened between US and London. Okay. Okay. Then Arpanet made it. Yeah. During the same year, email accounted for 75% of all Arpanet de- network activity. And uh, yeah, this is. this internet transmission control program or tcp which was written by wind surf yogan dalal and carl sunshein was published in 1974 it contains the first attested use of the term internet as a shorthand for internet working and hence we actually consider wind surf as the father of internet TCP means connection oriented communication protocol that facilitates the exchange of messages between computing devices in a network and it is the most common protocol in networks that uh, use the internet protocol that is IP IP it's a um, address of each and every computer uh, yeah together there are sometimes refer they they are sometimes referred to as TCP or ip and got formalized in 1982 we'll come to that later so anyway here actually you can see that 1974 version of document that is the specification of inter- internet transmission control program which was put forward by winton surf and this is why he is considered as the father of internet and now yeah coming to 1978 the minitel was invented and uh, in the yeah it was officially launched in 1982 uh, this is considered as a video text online service accessible through telephone lines and was world's most successful online service prior to the world wide web that's the importance that minitel and you can see with the help of uh, this a french woman trying to operate this minitel with the help of uh, this uh, telephone lines you can see in the uh picture so in between uh, certain things happened this in 1977 this pc modem was um, um, invented uh, these uh, those things we will learn when you learn the um, uh, um, details about the hardware and how the evolution happened in the formation of computers mm-hmm. so yeah anyway now after the invention of this uh, mini tel the important thing you need to keep in mind is the mm, invention of bulletin board system that is bbs that is um, that was put forward in 1978 bulletin board system and uh, in 1978 itself the first unsolicited commercial email message later known as spam was sent so the first spam message was sent in 1978 by gary york a marketer for the digital equipment corporation he actually sent it as um, as a kind of advertisement or for commercial purpose he sent his message to 400 of the 2600 people users on arpanet so that was considered as the first spam message and in 1979 uh, mud the earliest form of multiplayer games was introduced muds were entirely text based virtual worlds combining elements of role playing games interactive fiction and online chat so you can't even imagine uh, that with the uh, games that are available now in the internet and in uh, 1978 usenet an internet based discussion system was invented by tom truscott and jim jim ellis uh, that actually created by two graduate these two people were two graduate students 
it, and as i mentioned it is a discussion system allowing people from around the globe to converse about the same topics by posting public messages categorized by news group it was developed from the general purpose unix to unix copy dial up network architecture so yeah uh this uh, was later established in 1980 even though they formulated this now it was established in 1980 then the original 10 mbps ethernet standard was first introduced in 1980 ethernet is a family of computer networking technologies commonly used in local area network lan metropolitan area networks man and wide area networks wan it was commercially introduced in 18 na 1980 and first standardized in 1983 the european organization for nuclear research launched enquire uh, that was formulated by tim berners lee in 1980 and uh, yeah this was a hypertext program that allowed scientists at the, at the particle physics lab to keep track of people the to keep updated um, the update their um, so software and projects using hypertext or hyper uh, hyperlinks the computer science network or csnet was launched in 1981 in the united states its purpose was to extend networking benefits for computer science department at academic and research institutions that could not be directly connected to arpanet due to funding or authorization limitations now in 1982 The first emoticon was used by American computer scientist Scott E. Feldman, and this was the emoticon was used by him. Uh, the word emoticon comes from a contraction of the words uh, emo- emotional icon. Although it has been claimed that the first emoticon appeared in 1979, the first substantiated use of an emoticon came from this uh, Scott Feldman on September 19, 1982. While many people credit Kevin McKenzie with the invention of emoticon in 1979 it was uh, this person Scott who proposed it for the first time to the public anyway now coming to the domain name system which was introduced in 1983 along with the first domain um, name servers this was introduced by Paul V Mock Petris the domain name system is a naming database in which internet domain names are located and translated into internet protocol addresses we have already mentioned about dns when we discussed ip address the domain uh, yeah the domain name system was important in that it made the addresses on the internet more human friendly compared to its numerical ip address counterparts ip address of course you know it will be a set of numbers series of numbers and Uh, full stops dns servers allowed internet users to type in an easy to remember domain name and then converted it to the ip address automatically in 1985 first commercial internet domain name that is symbolics.com was de- registered and in 90 in 88 uh, this irc or internet relay chat a protocol for real time texting message was created by jarko uh, okirainen then yeah uh, also there were certain things unimportant things happened in between 1985 and 1988 one is the formulation of virtual communities that happened in 1985 so it was uh, developed by uh, stewart brand and larry brilliant in um, that is uh, the um, that can be considered as one of the oldest virtual communities that exist and also there were protocol wars in 1986 between the european uh, countries and um, the united states and of course by 1987 there were nearly 30000 hosts on the internet the original arpanet protocol had been limited to 1000 hosts but the adoption of this ip internet protocol and all um, standard made large number of hosts possible and then comes this internet relay chat which is considered as a uh, real time text messaging venture which was put forward by jericho then in yeah and also in 1988 itself uh, there was like that spam attack there was a first malicious internet based attack uh, which is and the, that uh, virus was termed as the morris worm 
and um, there was still much harm but still it was considered as the first malicious internet based attack and 1989 is of course a wonderful uh, year for the internet service providers because it was the time when the world wide web was launched by tim berners lee along with the standards for html http and urls and this was the coding that was forwarded by tim berners lee while introducing the world uh, world wide web and this coding was originally published in the march issue of mac world and then redistributed in may uh, 1990 okay so this um, i got from the internet itself and in 1990 itself the first commercial dial up internet provider the world was launched the that is the name of that dial up internet provider the first search engine named uh, google um, uh, like our google now first search engine rg was also introduced in 1990 the first web page was created on august 6 1991 and this web page was about um, was by was created by definitely by world wide web the first web page address is also given there you can find it online the first search protocol called gopher was launched in 1991 by mark p mckill yeah. so this is uh, and also the first content based search protocol uh, this is termed as the content based search protocol uh which is actually which aimed at some um, bringing in some sort of regulations in the field of um, internet now this uh, in the year 1991 mp3 file format of course you know it's all about audios uh, being um, are accepted as a standard these files being highly compressed later became a popular file format to share songs and entire albums via the internet we still use that. and in 1991 itself webcam was introduced by dr quentin stafford fraser and paul jardeski then uh, one of the most more interesting developments of this era though was the invention of this uh, thing this webcam of course and it was deployed at a cambridge university computer lab and its sole purpose was to monitor a particular coffee maker so that lab uh, users could avoid wasted trips to an empty coffee pot so this was the first purpose of that webcam and that's quite interesting then a graphical web browser mosaic was developed by mark andreessen in 1993 so that was another milestone uh, the invention of web browsers then uh, this was widely downloaded at that time like our mozilla or firefox a mozilla firefox or google chrome it was widely downloaded at that time and while mosaic was in the first web browser it is considered the first bra- browser to make the internet easily accessible to non techies and in 1993 both white house and the united nations came online marking the beginning of dot gov and dot org domain names and in in the next year uh, the net, um, another web pro- browser was launched and that is termed as netscape navigator the new internet architecture with commercial isps connected at naps in 1995 uh, and this netscape Na- netscape navigator was also invented by mark andreessen along with his new group there were a group of team members okay so this uh, new internet architecture with commercial isp actually uh, it refers to the commercialization of the internet that is or e-commerce through internet that is um, <coughs> being connected at naps in the 1995 so e-commerce through this um, eco bay that is ebay now you are familiar with ebay and amazon.com launched in 1995 along with that so the financial transactions through this credit card and uh, and uh, net banking also came into existence then then yeah even though these um, uh, ebay and amazon um, started getting profit early later in the 2000s uh, they actually went well 
they even survived the hit or the crash that happened in 2000 with the it field that we will be discussing in the coming slides then java and java script originally it was termed as live script was first introduced in 1995 by brendan ake also and this uh, other major developments at that year included the launch of geo cities uh, in through that the vatican also went online for the first time at that um, period in 1995 then another milestone is of course the yahoo the introduction of yahoo search engine then high speed uh, backbone network service which was launched in 1995 and in 1996 hot my hot mail the first web mail service was launched by sabir bhartia and jack smith so you are familiar with the term hot uh, hot mail also and in 1997 the term web blog is coined by john barker and this web blog is something that is related to blog only then the shortened from blog is generally credited to blogger peter meholes who first used it in 1999 uh, even though this and this um, word blog is being used in 1999 and web blog is a word that was coined in 1994 we often uh, credits the first blog um, to a student named justin hall who created it in 1994 that is considered as the first blog in the links.net that is considered as the first blog even though the name came into existence later only then the important thing happened in this you are netflix which was founded in 1997 by mark randolph and reed hastings it was not at all in the way um, we use it now it was only for um, the uh, renting videos and all then then google was launched in on 4th september 1998 a landmark thing by larry page and sir segri brin at menlo park california united states that of course the uh, like most important thing happened then and the first news story to broken online instead of traditional media was also happened in 1998 and also this msn search now active as bing was also launched in 1998 okay so the some of the important things like netflix blog google everything happened in the 1997 98 period okay then also in 1999 in, in there is a thing called napster was launched in 1998 it is an internet based file sharing um, software then most important thing then happened in 1998 then was the introduction of paypal and also um, with the rise actually 2000 something very important happens that is the dot com bubble burst that is or dot com collapse this resulted in huge losses for legions of uh, this uh, what investors hundreds of companies closed some of which had never turned a profit for their investors it was a kind of um, the depression period um, for the um, it boom amazon.com ebay price line were few companies which survived dot com bubble and uh, this was a tech bubble uh, or a stock market bubble caused by excessive speculation in it companies anyway these two companies survived that and while this crash was happening something important was um, happening on the other side that wikipedia was uh, formulated in 2001 2001 actually this dot com bubble wasn't yet over but uh, wikipedia launched at that time and one of the websites actually that paved the way for collective web content generation for the first time in the internet of course you know and yeah then coming to the um, skype uh, the invention of skype in 2003 by niklas and janus that was another important thing that happened then and linkedin of course you know your all your profiles and educational details and professional details will be uh, kept in linkedin you will and linkedin was also launched in 2003 and it was uh, there was another 
thing uh, um, which was very familiar for those um, people who used um, my, the, the social media before facebook that was myspace myspace becomes more po most popular social network in 2003 and which was launched by chris de wolf tom anderson and john hart the term social media believed to be first used by chris shapley in 2004 and um of course this uh, myspace was once considered as the most uh, popular social uh, network at that time and uh, there is another social news site which was uh, termed as dig which was launched by um, kevin kevin rose and his uh, team members in 2004 okay so this is believed to be uh, yeah first the yeah the um, launched by this uh, group and this paved the way for many other sites such as reddit mix yahoo bus etc everything social news site this uh, dis uh, dig actually revolutionized traditional means of generating and finding web content democratically promoting news and web links that are reviewed and voted by a community and 2004 also so another milestone that is the launching of facebook by mark zuckerberg in in um, actually it was basically for open for the college students later only really it uh, became that popular and 2000 in 2005 youtube was launched by hurley steve chen and javed karim bringing free online video hosting and sharing it to masses 2006 uh um, so the launching of twitter by jack dorsey and his team members then um, oh, it was originally uh, called as twitter uh, t w i w t r inspired by the name flickr f l l f l i c k r flickr it was initially termed as twitter t w i w t r and the first twitter message was just setting up my twitter t w w t r okay then also there was a major move to place tv shows online and this happened with uh, hulu that is an american subscription video on demand service which was launched in uh, 2007 a joint venture between abc nbc and fox to make popular tv shows available to watch online so this was a major move that is placing the tv shows online and also in Uh, yeah go on the, the google at street view which was important was launched in the uh, in 2007 and kindle e reader and virtual bookshop was invented by jason marks koi in 2007 that was another important thing and this 2008 us elections actually um, there was a major role for this um, this uh, what on the kind of campaigning through this internet in 2008 elections the each of the of the candidates uh, were uh, having this facebook page or a twitter feed and this actually um, had some sort of influence in the results or over the voters then uh, this ios app store launched with initial 500 apps in 2000, july 2008 and along with that in october 2008 android equivalent also came into existence Google Chrome browser was launched in 2008 that was another milestone and in 2009 Google Docs a web based word processor spreadsheet and data storage service was launched Google Docs of course you know we we all are familiar with that and it's a very useful product from Google 2009 brought about one of the biggest changes to come to the internet in the long time when us relaxed its control over icann that is the internet corporation for assigned names and numbers so uh, it relaxed its uh, in the naming process relaxations were brought in the naming procedures and in 2009 we saw the first cryptocurrency that is bitcoin and um, whatsapp was launched in 2009 by brian acton and jan cohn and you know that later it was taken over by facebook then then uh, instagram was launched in 2010 by kevin uh, and mike then google play which uh, long, was launched in 2012 and this facebook buys whatsapp for um, this uh, 19 billion dollars in 2014 google unveils google assistant 
a voice activated personal assistant program in 2016 google joins ms amazon's alexa siri from apple and cortana from microsoft after this in 2017 fcc that is federal communications Com- commission um, in united states take away the net neutrality and uh, i hope you remember the all the mess that happened after that all the discussions that have were happening across the social media over uh, this for and against the net neutrality in 2018 worldwide web creator um, tim unveiled plans for a new secure internet and now uh, this 2000 we, of course in 2019 we have reached 30 years of world wide web and nowadays of course we know that there are uh, certain phishing activities there are fake news that are coming upon internet and many other things that are happening around and uh, so many fraudulence and uh, there are certain things that are um, uh, called cyber ethics then uh, cyber bullying then uh, spam then cyber crime many things that are happening and we'll be dealing with this especially with cyber ethics and cyber crime in the next uh, videos uh, that is the portion i have to take next so we'll be dealing with uh, all those things i hope uh, everything is clear now even though it is a lengthy and exhaustive timeline i hope you understood the timeline or the evolution of internet through all these years from 1969 till 2019 and nothing much important happened in 2019 or 20 now that's why i didn't mention that anyway uh, i'll be back with the videos on cyber crime and cyber ethics in the next coming lectures until then stay tuned stay safe Thank you.